What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to another example. We got to graph this function here, the absolute value of four minus X plus the absolute value of X plus two. So notice we're adding two absolute value expressions. So notice that with this function in particular, we can't graph something first and then reflect the Y values, the negative Y values, the positive ones, because these absolute value expressions, they're sort of isolated. So we don't have like an absolute value of some kind of function where we could take that function, graph it, then reflect all the negative Y values to positive ones to get the graph. Right? We have these two separated absolute values. So using that method is a little tougher for uh, this function. What we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to take this function and convert it to a piecewise function, and then take that piecewise function and graph it. But converting it to a piecewise function is gonna take a little bit more work as well, because we gotta deal with these separately. So that's actually what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna take absolute value four minus X, this here, change that to a piecewise function. So notice that if four minus X is greater than or equal to zero, then it's just gonna stay as that expression. But if four minus X is less than zero, if it's negative, we gotta take that, multiply it by a negative one to change it to a positive. So simplifying all of this, we would end up having four minus X, and then over here distributing the negative, we'd have X minus four. It's gonna be this function, if we isolate for this X, bring the negative X over, we'll have X is less than or equal to four. So this would be less than or equal to four. And this one's gonna be X is greater than four. So just took this, changed it to this piecewise function here. So that is the absolute value of four minus X. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the absolute value of X plus two changing this, it would be X plus two when X plus two is greater than or equal to zero. It's gonna be negative bracket X plus two when X plus two is negative. If that whole expression is negative, we gotta multiply it by a negative one to change it to a positive. So simplifying this, let's write it over here. We would end up having X plus two when X is greater than or equal to negative two, right? If we isolate for this X here, and then over here, distribute that negative inside the bracket. This is gonna be when X is less than negative two. Okay, so this is this piecewise function. All right, so I just took them separately, created separate piecewise functions. But now what we gotta do, because we're adding these two here, we gotta combine them. And notice that we have different intervals, so we actually have to combine the intervals. So notice that this interval is when X is less than or equal to four when X is greater than four. And then this interval is when X is greater than or equal to negative two and X is less than negative two. So combining them, if we draw, I'm first gonna show it on a number line, feel like it's easier to. Notice we got negative two. And then we have four. Those are, our two sort of um, intervals or uh, meeting points, if you will, that we're working with. And since we're combining them, we gotta look at them together. So this first interval here is gonna be what? When X is less than negative two. And when X is less than negative two, we know this function is gonna equal negative X minus two. Actually, let's go in this order. So notice that when X is less than negative two, what's this function gonna equal? This function is gonna be four minus X because it's four minus X when X is less than four and any X values less than negative two is the same as X values being less than four. That's encapsulated in this here. So we're gonna have four minus X plus when X is less than negative two, this function takes this format, negative X minus two. Okay, hopefully that is making sense. Basically what I'm doing is 
First, I got these intervals to work with. I got three intervals for this because of these meeting points. And looking at this first interval, when x is less than negative 2, this function is going to take this format when x is less than negative 2 because it takes this format when x is less than or equal to 4. And x being less than or less than negative 2 is within this interval. So this function is going to take this format plus this function is going to take this format when x is less than negative 2. So it's going to be that there. And so notice that we could simplify this. Negative x minus x gives us negative 2x, and then 4 minus 2 gives us positive 2. Right? So this function is going to be this in this interval right there. And now we move to the next interval. So notice the next interval, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 4. So it's inclusive of these points as well, because it's inclusive here and here. So 4 minus x, when x is between negative 2 and positive 4, it's going to take this format, because x values between negative 2 and positive 4 is x values less than or equal to 4 here. So it's going to be 4 minus x. This function is going to take this format in this interval plus what's this function going to be in this interval? Well, when x is between negative 2 and 4, that's going to be this. It's going to be x plus 2 because notice that this function is x plus 2 for all x values greater than or equal to negative 2. So in an interval between negative 2 and 4, that is within this interval here. So that's going to be x plus 2. Anyway, hopefully you're getting this explanation. I know maybe I'm not explaining it the best, but uh, trying my best here. Um, notice the negative x, positive x, those net out to 0. Then we got 4 plus 2. That ends up being 6. So this function is just going to be a y value of 6 in this interval here. Okay, And now the only thing that's left is x values greater than 4. Notice that this function is going to take this format, x minus 4, when x is greater than 4. And then this function is going to take this format, because x values greater than 4 is within x values greater than or equal to negative 2. So it's going to be x plus 2. So this would end up being 2x minus 2. All right, and now notice we can make a piecewise function with this information. We could take this and split it up into these functions. So it's going to be negative 2x plus 2 when x is less than negative 2. It's going to be 6 when x is between negative 2 and 4. And then it's going to be 2x minus 2 when uh, x is greater than 4, like that. Took this, made it into a nice piecewise function. And now, finally, we can graph it. So what we're going to do is label these x values first. So I'm going to have uh, negative 2. That's going to be like here. And then positive 4. That would be like here. So notice when x is when x is less than negative 2, it's this line here, negative 2x plus 2. Now, how is negative 2x plus 2 going to look in general? Well, it's going to have a y-intercept of 2, and then it has a negative 2 slope. So it's sloping downwards, so the line kind of looks like this. If we were to just draw that line, negative 2x plus 2. But notice that... It's only that line when x is less than negative 2 for this piecewise function. So at this x value of negative 2, we would actually erase everything over here. All right, so it's going to be this line, negative 2x plus 2, when x is less than negative 2. And because it's less than negative 2, this here would be a whole. 
Now, what y value is that hole going to be at? If we plug in negative 2 for that line, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus 2 is 6. So this hole here is going to be at negative 2 and 6. But notice that in the next interval, when x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and when x is less than or equal to 4, the y value is 6. y equals 6 is just a horizontal line. And notice that that's at this point here. So it's actually going to be uh, continuous. And y equals 6 is a horizontal line, so it's going to be a horizontal line at this y value of 6 all the way to this x value of 4, like that. And then notice that for x values greater than 4, it's going to be 2x minus 2. It's going to be this line with a positive slope. It has a y-intercept of negative 2. But it's for x values greater than 4. Now notice at an x value of 4, if we plug in 4 here for this x, we'd get 8 minus 2, which is 6, which is the same as this point here. So it's continuous on this side as well. And it's just going to be a line with a positive 2 slope. So it's going to look like that. Right, so negative 2x plus 2, y equals 6, and then y equals 2x minus 2. So this graph looks like this over here. If you took this, plugged it into decimals, you should get uh, something that looks like this. All right, so kind of tricky. Created piecewise functions for both of these separately, then combined the intervals of both and then had, it, had to add these two functions depending on what their values were in those respective intervals. And then we made that piecewise function for this overall function and then just graphed that and got this result.